Welcome back. This is Chris, my brother in Christ, Stephen. Welcome back. Uh, date today is September 18th, year of our Savior, Jesus Christ, 2019. And we're going to be talking about Calvinism Part 2. Uh, Calvinism Part 2. Uh, and as uh, as we ended the last uh, video, uh, Stephen um, uh, had some, uh, I thought, some, something interesting that correlates what we're talking about being we're part of the elect, um, that God chose us and the elect. That becomes very dangerous because he actually um, was invited a little while back. And I just, just a side note, I don't want to spend too much time on this because we'll cover uh, Jehovah's Witness. We've covered it before and we'll cover it again. Uh, but the Jehovah's Witness, and he was talking to them, and they were part of their religion is about the elect, right, Stephen? Mm, talking true. about the elect, right? Uh, yeah. Were they saying stuff like the... The elect was appointed by the disciples. Is that what it is? Did they have 12 people on a board or what was... Oh, yeah, on the... Uh, um, you're talking Jehovah's Witnesses? Yes, Jehovah's yeah, Witnesses. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, but it was about the elect. You know, yes. so he got the 144,000. That's limited atonement later. Yeah, that is, that is. And others yeah. are going to be... They're not going to heaven. They're going to be here on earth. And like, what? That's, the Bible says new heaven and new earth. Yeah, the yeah. Earth passes away, but that's kind of what they... Yeah, so, you know, that's just a real understanding that we got to be very careful and not add to the Word of God or take away from it. And we should search the Scriptures about being a good Berean. I want you to be a good Berean uh, to search the Scriptures, uh, to see if what we're saying is true or not. So, continuing here, we're talking about, yeah, God does hate sin, um, but it, He also is a God of love. Um what have what is uh, what about John 15 verse 13 John 15 verse 13 isn't that talking about a greater love you know so God yeah he hates sin so that means that he's not here going well it's God's will that you know children are being molested and raped and that's just what God wants it's no. like no that's not true God hates workers of iniquity he hates sin greater love hath no man than this that a man lay down his life for his friends. Right. Greater love. And didn't he do that for the disciples and for all of us? He says, look, I call you friends. Did he say that to the disciples? Right. Um, I believe there's a scripture verse on that, but he called them friends. He goes, I'm, I'm not your just, I'm calling you friends so you understand. And I lay my life down for you, and I'm going to lay down my life for the whole world. Uh, so... And how much greater love is that? That somebody lays their life down for you? I don't think you can approve, approve upon that, ladies and no. gentlemen. So it's not difficult to see and believe that Jesus Christ died for the whole world. Whether or not some of those in the world accept that, the ark, uh, uh, you know, so you have this aspect here. Um, I, I thought it was interesting, uh, Dave Hunt, who's the founder, original founder of the Brian Call, really good books, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, Excuse me. Uh, I, I listened to uh, Dave Hunt and um, was it Tom? Um, gosh, I forgot Tom his Horn? name. No, it's it's Tom in here. Uh, okay. Sorry, sir, right. but um, it uh, the bottom line it was on faith and it really helped me come out. Of, I came out of a cult of uh, feast keeping and all of that stuff, and, it, and I, it took me a long time to understand faith, the faith. It's about faith in Christ. You, nothing you can do to earn your salvation. So that's why I'm pretty dogmatic about it, because it's a religious net. It Festivals, feasts, new moons. Yeah, uh, all of it's all, all works faith. Sabbaths, so. Yeah, and it's you know, it's a, we're, and then that leads into what we're the elect, right? Yeah. We're the elect because. Uh, because of the color of our skin, because because we keep the feasts, we're better than you. Because we do this, we're we're more holy than you. It's other flesh. It's it leads to a bias attitude. It leads to a lot of problems. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So Dave Hunt uh, quotes um, um, quote uh, because of Calvinists. Peculiar belief and predestination of certain uh, nature of irresistible grace and so forth. That's part of TULIP. God has predestined some to go to heaven and predestined others to go to hell. Therefore, it can't be for whosoever, as mentioned in John 3.15. Uh, Calvin, continuing the quote, that Calvinists believe in limited atonement that Christ did not die for all. Therefore, they did. They have to change uh, world to elect. 
whosoever must be whosoever of the elect. John 3.17 tells us, quote, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. On and on it goes with many similar verses. The Bible even ends with, Whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. Mm -hmm. Whosoever will. Whosoever. Not just the elect, but whosoever will. Uh, of the water of life. And that water of life is the word. That's Jesus Christ. That's the tree of life, right? Gives right. forth water. But no, you can't say that's whosoever because only the elect are allowed to do that. And in fact, no one can unless God regenerates them first. It's like, wow, really? So God has to regenerate you first. He has to... He has to uh, you have to be reborn again before before that. Um, what about John um, four fourteen? I think that's what that was saying. John four fourteen. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be him in him a well of water springing up unto everlasting life. Everlasting life, and that's through Jesus Christ. And that water is for all. Uh, who want to partake of it. What about Revelation 21, verse 6? Revelation 21, verse 6. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. And verse 7 says, He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. What about Revelation uh, 22? Revelation 22, verses 1 and verse 17. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, on either side of the river, there was, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. That's Christ, ladies and gentlemen. Yep. It's not limited atonement. It's available atonement for all. Um, so continue, continuing the quote by Dave Hunt. So you have to be born again before you get saved. That's irresistible grace. Before you can have faith to believe the gospel. So you're not justified by faith then because God has chosen you. But I, I don't understand because let's conclude the matter. Romans 3.28 says that we're justified by faith. Right? Yep. By faith. By faith in Him. Romans 3.28 Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. What about Ephesians 2, 8 through 9? Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. For by grace you are saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So we have to accept what accept his free gift. Um, so uh, that's really, really interesting. Yeah. So why would God uh, be saying, "Whosoever will, let him come"? Why would Jesus say, "Come unto me, all ye who labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest"? And I believe that's Matthew uh, eleven twenty eight. Why would he be saying this? If he's saying that, oh, if you're heavy laden. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are of heavy laden, I, and I will give you rest. And it also says in 29, Take my yoke upon you, and lean, and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. So the yoke is easy, I mean it isn't very complicated. Nope. Um, it's very light. Doesn't it say, all ye who labor? All. All. So that's whosoever, all ye. That's really, I don't, I don't read elect into that. Mm. Um, so continuing the quote, we have hundreds, even thousands of verses. You could go uh, to Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55. Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. Right? And he goes on to say, what, verses 5 and verses 6. Behold, thou shalt call a nation that... Thou knowest not, and nations that knew not thee shall run unto thee because of the Lord thy God. 
for the Holy One of Israel, for he hath glorified thee. Is that Isaiah, Isaiah 55? 55? Yeah, Isaiah 55. Yeah. Okay. 55, 6? Or 55, 5? Okay. Does it say, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts? Oh, 55, 7. Let the wicked forsake his way oh. and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord, for he will have mercy upon him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon so he, he that's free will we choose whether we want to come to him or not right so he does call upon us to seek him and yet nobody can unless they have been regenerated it doesn't make sense ladies and gentlemen end quote so whoever will i mean if you just look up the word whoever will new testament search it's pretty broad ladies and gentlemen whoever will yeah um so then you get into who can understand the gospel Sometimes Calvinists will emphasize that their theology rests upon solid biblical exegesis, which is Bible interpretation, being, quote, firmly based upon the Word of God, end quote. Some have gone so far as to assert that, quote, this teaching was held to be the truth by the apostles, end quote. Find that all the time. Oh, yeah, we go back to Peter and the apostles, so therefore our faith is more pure. Find that all the time, right? <clears throat> They're, pers they're personally interpreting the Bible the way they want. Right, and that sounds like, oh, we're part of the uh, apostolic succession, so our faith is a true faith, and you got to come through us. Happens all the time. Mm -hmm. um, Christ taught the doctrines that have come to be known as the five points of Calvinism. That's another thing they say. So according to the Bible itself, however, no one should accept such claims without verifying them from scripture. Isn't it funny how all these religions say, well, if you don't come to us, everybody else is going to hell if you don't do, do it our way. The, the Mormons, the uh, Seventh-day Adventists, the, the Koi, Church of Israel, the Catholics, everybody, uh, the, you know, the Calvinists, if you don't do it, everybody else is going to hell except for us. You know, we're the only ones that know the way the truth it, is. It's kind of selective and elective, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. And, and, once, and, and, and you got to follow them, this once you, join, once you join their church or what have you, if you ever quit going, then they shun you. Right. And well, then nothing you're, to do with you. And a lot of times, folks, if you're not safe, you can get cursed because that there is a power in this world. And when you have religions that are founded by a religious spirit, not of the Holy Spirit, but from doctrines of devils, uh, then those spirits, they can pray uh, and precatory prayers upon you and you can um, fall into some some problems and that's why we always want to encourage you to get saved by accepting the free gift what jesus christ did on the cross so this whole aspect of um you know you we need to be searching things ladies and gentlemen we're saying here don't don't believe what we're saying search the scriptures um so any doctrine claiming to be based on the bible must be carefully checked against the bible an option open to anyone who knows god's word Relying upon a supposed biblical expert for an evaluation of the opinions of another would be going in circles. No matter whose opinion one accepted, the re end result would be the same. One would still be held hostage to human opinion. Each individual must personally check out all opinions directly from the Bible. Yet I have been advised, referring to Dave Hunt, he says, I have been advised to keep silent on the basis that only those with special qualifications are competent to check Calvinism against the Bible. An idea in itself contradicts Scripture. You know, that's once again, I mean, if you want to look at the intellectualism, ladies and gentlemen, scholasticism, the scholars, they're really being influenced by, by the Roman Catholic Church and the Jesuits, ladies and gentlemen. And that, these organizations, the seed of Satan, is not about promoting the gospel. In fact, they're against it. But even though they say Jesus, even though they say these things, so we at the simple get nailed, ladies and gentlemen, wise as a serpent and gentle as a dove. A dove excuse me. So the inhabitants of Berea, Berea, ladies and gentlemen, though not, they weren't even Christian, ladies and gentlemen. They weren't even Christian when Paul first preached the gospel to them. Acts 17, 11. But what did the Bereans do in Acts 17, verse 11? Did they just say, Paul, whatever you say, I'm going to follow Paul. 
I'm going to follow John Calvin. Is that what they said? These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. Therefore many of them believed, also of honorable women, which were Greeks, and of men, not a few. Greeks too, huh? So it yeah. wasn't just about Jews, right? Yeah. About Greeks too. Yep. Um, so we see that, and they were more noble. And the noble is a pretty, uh, that is a, a pretty amazing word, noble. Uh, noble people. Uh, so, yet leading Calvinists insist that it requires special and apparently lengthy preparation for anyone to become qualified to examine that peculiar doctrine in light of the Bible. Why? Ladies and gentlemen, why? Yeah. Um, this is the whole aspect of, oh, you have to go through seminary, right, to preach the Word of God. And that's why they switched all the scriptures to Latin, because most of the people didn't know Latin, so... Yeah, could, yeah, keep but, it. Yeah. yeah, only the intelligentsia yeah. had access to the yeah. Word. And that's why, uh, that's why the, the, the papacy was so angry and so hateful, and that's why they murdered men, women, and children, launched a military crusade, and they're st it's still going on today, ladies and gentlemen. The people are being slaughtered. Uh, in Africa, you have uh, people are being slaughtered um, that are black Christians. Yep. Black Christians being slaughtered by these by the Jesuits setting forth these um, um, these Freemasonic leaders that are black um, that are basically Freemasons, Knights of Columbus, Knights of Malta, whatever military order you want to call them, um, and they're bought and paid for. And they, um, they serve Satan. They don't serve the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's sad. Uh, so this is very dangerous. So now, but what does the Bible say about uh, it self-declares? Uh, does it declare a young man can understand its instructions and therefore cleanse his way? What about Psalm 119, verse 9? It's talking about a young man. Does he have to go to seminary, Stephen, to cleanse his way? Psalm 119, verse 9. Uh, Beth, wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. So he's cleansing his way by what? By, by scholasticism? Mm -hmm. By the word of God, right? Yeah. Also, 119, verse 10 says, With my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Commandments is a part of the Word of God because commandment means what? God's instruction to our mind, right? right? Commandment versus government. I would say that 99% of Christians believe government, govern means to control and meant means mind, believes government over commandment. And we've talked about this because according to commandment, the living word of God, the moon is a light, but government says the moon is something we landed on. Yeah. I digress for a moment, ladies. You know, getting back on track. What about 2 Timothy 1.5, Stephen? 2 uh, Timothy 1.5. This is talking about a child can know the scriptures through home instruction, through home homeschooling from what? A mother and a grandmother. Man, that's amazing. A child can know scripture at home. A home-based instruction, home-based church through 2 Timothy 1 verse 5, right? When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first with thy grandmother Lois, and with thy mother Eunice, I am persuaded that in thee also. What about 3 verse 15? Chapter 3 verse 15 of 2 Timothy. Isn't the word of God amazing? And, for, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, Whoa. which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. No, but I, I thought you have to go to seminary and spend years and years understanding Calvinism because Calvinism is about the Bible. So you'd have to. Yeah, let me go to the next verse. Okay, all right. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. For reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. And we don't need to go to a school. So I don't need to go to seminary? Mm. Interesting. And that the man of God may be perfect, 
thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So Timothy certainly uh, was certainly not a seminary trained theologian. No. Uh, yet Paul considered him competent to study and rightly divide God's word. His special expertise were required uh, to test Calvinism against scripture. It would be proof enough that this peculiar doctrine did not come from bi valid Bible exegesis, which is Bible meaning Bible interpretation. Anything that uh, enigmatic, en enigmatic would be enigma, which we mean obscure, hidden, occult, mm -hmm. secret. So to think that anything is enigmatic by very definition could not have been derived from the Bible, which, claim, which itself claims to be written for the simple. As we've already stated in, uh, I believe, uh, Psalm 19, verse 7. Psalm 19, verse 7. Psalm 19, verse 7. Verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Wow, making wise the simple. That is the simple meaning that they were not trained in seminary. And yes, and the very next one says, The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Wow. Okay. Fascinating, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Psalm uh, 119, 130. Psalm 119, verse uh, 130, uh, talking about the entrance. The entrance. What do these words give us? The word of God, the commandments, the statutes, the judgments. Do they, are they not light? Are they not light to us? The entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. So the simple can know, the young can know, the children can know the way of the Lord, not through scholasticism, not through the Jesuit-approved universities that most Protestant Christians go through, but through the living Word of God from the Protestant Reformation, ladies and gentlemen. That's why we talk about the Westminster Confession of Faith, right? Talk about this. And you go, well, Chris, there might be some Calvinism in here. <laughs> Okay, ladies and gentlemen, but as you're reading the Confession of Faith, it's loaded with Scripture, ladies and gentlemen. It's a Confession of Faith, and today we do away with these, with these uh, uh, landmarks, and we do away with God's living Word, and we wonder why we have problems today. So, this is interesting. In contrast, what is, uh, you know, there, there are many friends that say, you know, you just can't know um, uh, in spite of Okay, let me just read this. Many friends who obviously sincerely, uh, sincerity was appreciated, have told me that in spite of my quoting John Calvin directly from his writings, so you're quoting John Calvin directly from his writings, along with quoting leading Calvinists of today, I was still likely to misrepresent Calvinism. Even after many hours of detailed discussions with Calvinistic friends, they still told me, you just don't understand Calvinism, end quote. Then what of the claim that Calvinism is the gospel and true Christianity? Good multitudes of mature and fruitful evangelicals have somehow misunderstood the gospel and Christianity? No, ladies and gentlemen, no. absolutely not. In contrast, let's go to Luke 18, 16 through 17. Luke 18, 16 through 17. And Jesus called unto them and said, Suffer little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for, for of such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, Whoever shall, shall not receive, receive the kingdom of God as a little child shall in no wise enter therein. What a great great picture mm -hmm. about the gospel about children you know children are very receptive the older you get the less receptive a lot of times it's so much easier to teach a child to swim than it is to teach an adult how about foreign languages as well yes easy the older you get it's yeah. hard to change ladies and gentlemen so 
Um, so should Calvinism remain a mystery for the Christian? The very fact, if true, would be additional proof that Calvinism was not derived from Scripture. How could something so complicated possibly come from that upon which every person is capable of meditating day and night, right? Psalm 1, 1 through 2, talking about meditating. Now, meditation, ladies and gentlemen, I have to be very specific about meditation yeah. because today meditation is about clearing your mind. It's based upon Eastern mysticism today, uh, Ignatius Loyola, Society of Jesus, all spiritual exercises that have infiltrated all the church, Christian yoga, all that satanic garbage is what I'm going to call it. Meditation is about meditating upon God's Word. What does Scripture say about Psalm 1, 1 through 2? Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Yeah, so that's the key, folks. Meditating day and night on the Word of God, prayer, and being with like-minded people, ladies and gentlemen. That is the three-tier of Christianity. This is about being joyful received, even by a little child. If the essential nourishment of God's Word provides us, provides us to be every man's daily sustenance for spiritual life. That's what this is about. Deuteronomy 8.3, I'm not sure how much time we have, we're getting near the end, ladies and gentlemen, but uh, we'll pick this up. But Deuteronomy 8.3 would be another scripture to tie in what we're going to read it, what we're going to read in the next video. But it's talking about daily bread, right? The word of God is our sustenance to feed this temple. This temple is not made by hands. It's not a building, but it's God's temple. And we want the Holy Spirit to dwell in it through Jesus Christ because we accepted the free gift, the gospel. God bless you.